Alaska was first, and then later Hawaii becomes states of the good old U.S. of A, a chartered plane that was transporting musicians Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, Buddy Holly, and pilot Roger Peterson crashes in foggy conditions near Clear Lake, Iowa, killing all, all, all four on board. The tragedy would be called The Day the Music Died. The year is 1959. And this sedan delivery could be had at your Rambler AMC dealer. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that inspires you to drive something different. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home of the orphan cars or brands of cars that died long ago. Engine episodes on Wednesdays. We talk about the history, the design, the specs, go over old advertisements, but most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds of interest, a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So real quick before diving into this one, you guys have been asking about another live show. We are going to do that next Tuesday night. So mark your calendars. That's Tuesday, December 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will just talk. Um, I invite you to my kitchen table where I do these episodes. It can be a question and answer thing. We're going to talk about where the channel is going to go next year. Don't worry. We're, we're not going anywhere, but I, I just want to get what you guys, I want to get your feedback. What would you guys like to see next year on this channel? I found this 1959 Rambler American sedan delivery in the car corral at the AACA Hershey Fall Meet. For those that may have never heard of this car show, it started clear back in 1955, has grown into a week-long event. Huge flea market, which encompasses the Hershey Park parking lot. Car corral with anywhere between 1,500 to 25 cars for sale. There is a car show on Friday. It's always the first full week in October. If you're a car enthusiast, it's definitely a bucket list event. 1959 AMC model lineup. But before getting into all of that, a bit of background. On May 1st, 1954, Nash merged with Hudson to become one of the most underrated, overlooked companies to ever spawn God's Green Earth American Motors Corporation, or AMC for short. AMC would continue making Nash and Hudson models. But Hudson models would give up their step-down chassis design for the Nash unit body design. AMC would produce both Nash and Hudson through 1957. In 1958, they went all in on Rambler. 1959 AMC model lineup. You had the American in the basement, followed by the Rambler, Ambassador, and they also still offered their Metropolitan, which they imported from England. AMC offered the American line from 1958 to 1969, but it's worth mentioning that this car was built under a different name. It was not exactly the same, but it was roughly the same. It goes back even further, and it was called the Rambler during the Nash days, going back to 1950. This is where things get a little tricky. So after the merger, Rambler was upgraded to middle option. And what was the Rambler was renamed American. Essentially, American was offered in three generations. 1959 is in the first generation, which was produced from 1958 to 1960. Then 1959 could be had as a two-door sedan, two-door wagon, and two-door sedan delivery. It's worth mentioning they did make a four-door model, but it was only available for one year in this body style, 1960. Standard amenities included, but not limited to, turn signals, hood ornament, Double coat baked enamel, single colors, left hand sun visor, front ashtray, manual dome light, vacuum boost, fuel pump, fuel filter, motor transmission, seats to sit in. Options, not getting into all of the options, but here are a few flash o -matic, overdrive unit, weather eye heater, manual transistor radio, undercoating, airline reclining seats. Two-tone colors, self-adjusting brakes, Continental spare tire, Solex glass. 
This car was available in two trims, Deluxe and Super. Super gave you some more exterior trim bits, Super badging, four padded armrests, a right-hand side sun visor, cigarette lighter, map and glove box light, automatic dome light, roll down rear windows. Let's talk specs, 178 inches long, 73 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 100 inches. It weighs 2,570 pounds. Price, it's around $1,795, which is equivalent to, wait for it, wait for it, you spending $18,978.33 in the year 2023. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for this car. That is the 195.6 Flathead 6 Flying Scott. It's good for 90 horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 150 pound-feet, or 203 Newton meters at 1,600 RPM. With a bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4 inches, compression is 7.25 to 1. Four main bearings built of cast iron with a three-speed manual transmission. Zero to 60 could be had in 16.8 seconds with an alleged top speed of 85 miles per hour while achieving an average between 17.9 to 20 miles to the gallon, perhaps more. Let's talk styling. Just notice everything. Look at all the bright work around the headlights, turn signal indicators, bumpers with bumperettes. Notice how there's a raised section here in the bumper. There isn't a straight panel on this car. The grill is raised. Just look at how this whole body curves. Coming back up to the wheel well. It flares out, but then it's capped off with a bead that runs around the wheel well. Notice how the rocker is protruded and the body is pressed back in. Rambler American badge there on the, there on the fender. There's an ever so slight crease here and then it all gets smoothened out before it gets to the headlight. As a vent for the weather eye. This car does have drip rails that run the perimeter of the car. So look at this line here. The door handles are the, they're just like everything else that Nash was making, I'm sorry, everything else that AMC was making at the time, pull it in, clip it in, clip it to open it. Look at these bumpers. Notice this protrusion here in the center mimics the front bumpers. It has this overrider bar that rides, has this overrider bar on top of the license plate to connect the license plate bracket. Just look at how small this tailgate is. Here's my hand for reference. It's a really tiny tailgate. The top opens as well. And notice it's not straight, it's curved. Look at how these rear lights protrude, how it comes back in. Just take a gander back here at the space that you have to store stuff. Gas filler cap here. Look at how these fenders come back. Getting inside, notice how the door panel has this, notice how this door is all trimmed out. Looks like aluminum on the top and it has a lot of heft to it. These feel like vinyl door cards, armrest, window crank for the big window, 
door handle to get out, vent windows. The mirrors are mounted to the top of the door frame. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, high beam switch, clutch, brake, gas pedal, handbrake. Just take a look at this interior. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Piece of paper, I don't want to remove it. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Key, turn signal, stock. All gauges are inside this one single pod speedometer with odometer just below it. Amp meter, which is an idiot light, as well as oil pressure. Coolant temperature, gasoline gauge, gear shift, which is a three on the tree type, vent slash heat to pull this one out, wipers, headlights, fan slash blower motor, lighter, ashtray. Taking a quick gander under the hood, it's not this car. This is a picture from the internet that I found. I totally forgot to shoot under the hood section with this car. But as you can see, the engine sits way down inside. The battery is mounted right next to the engine and it actually sits up higher. Oil filter is mounted top side. Also notice it's not on the block itself. Interesting side note, this engine doesn't use a traditional intake, nor does it have a traditional exhaust manifold. On the positive side, cute, would be perfect for urban delivery vehicle, gets good gas mileage. These are definitely different against it. They are rare, rust prone. The wagons are generally a fortune if and when you can find one for sale. They're generally hot rotted out with a big V8 and custom seats and a chopped roof and why you would do this to a car like this is beyond me. They also like to put hideous mag wheels on these. Finding parts might be questionable, especially suspension parts. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1959 Ford Ranch Wagon or 1959 Rambler American or 1959 Chevy two-door Brookwood wagon. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving to the second scenario, which one of these would you rather have? A 1950 Nash Rambler wagon or 1953 Nash Rambler wagon or 1959 AMC Rambler American Wagon. Gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or send me an email. Both of them will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I totally dig reading the stories. I love it when you guys share your experience with these cars. And I really do appreciate all of the information and insight that you guys bring to this car community. Until next time, toodaloo! La 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 means I love you.